Welcome to our channel and thanks for tuning in. Now I know that God has a word not just for you, but he also has a word through us for you. Now we're about to start. Make yourself comfortable and let's venture into God's word together. Let all the other names, let them fade away. Let them fade away. Why? Because Jesus, he's taken his place and Jesus, it is his name that we raise. It is his name that we lift up on high because he deserves the praise and the glory and the honor and the adoration. What a privilege to belong to a God who can do everything, a God who can do anything, a God who, who, who is not limited by anyone or, 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 or any force. No government on the earth can dethrone him. He is God all by himself. He did not need anybody's permission to take on the, the title of Jehovah. He did not need anybody's permission to take on the title of the sovereign one. He did not need anybody's vote. There was nobody voted him in. Nobody can vote him out. Nobody can. You can't concourse against the Lord our God because he is God. There are some things that are just, just because they are. And one of them is the fact that God is God. In the, irrespective of the things that we're experiencing, irrespective of the things that we see, the truth still remains that the Lord is sovereign. He is sovereign over every situation. Uh, the, the testimonies that we heard were very encouraging. The testimonies that we have been hearing have been reminders how great, how great is our God. The song says, sing with me how great is our God. All the earth, the whole world will see and sing that how great is our God. He has that name that is above every other name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee does bow and every tongue does confess that this Jesus, he is God. We bless your name, O oh God. We exalt you. We magnify you. We appreciate you. We know, O oh God, Father, that it, regardless of the things that we have seen, you have shown yourself strong. You have shown yourself consistent. You have shown yourself, Father Lord, able, more than able, more than able. We rejoice in your wisdom. We rejoice in your majesty. Lord, even because of these things that you, we have seen you do, Lord, and we appreciate you for those things, our faith is encouraged to believe you even for more. Oh, we are, we are able to believe for even greater because we have seen how great you have been. Blessed be your holy name. We exalt you. We magnify you. I ask you in the name of Jesus, Lord, that that which we will share today, Lord, that you will communicate the reality of it into the, into the hearts of the men and the women that are, are, that are on the other end of this in the mighty name of Jesus. We bless your name. I ask that you would anoint my lips, O oh God, afresh for this word. Anoint the hearts of your people. Pour your word into, into the depths of me. Father, every, every part of me to be teeming with your word more and more, even now, even now, my King, in the name of Jesus. This we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Well, uh, good afternoon one more time. Uh, for as we continue the service, we're wrapping it up, we're bringing it to an end, and we want to bring it uh, into a what I will call a, a meditative end. I want us to, to think together, but prior to that, uh, this is probably a, 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 a launch pad for something that I believe we will be looking into in more detail later on. We'll do a teaching on this later on, but, but it, it, it springs from... Um, I think it was on Thursday. On Thursday, uh, the Flow Rivers team, we pray every lunchtime. Different groups of people are meeting to pray. It's on a free conference line. So if you, if you just, any lunchtime and you feel led that you want to pray along and you want a group of people to pray along with, you can connect with anybody. Whoever has introduced you to, to this particular um, uplink, you know, this YouTube link, just reach out to them and say, look, I want to get in touch with somebody so that I can pray along on a lunchtime prayer call. And they'll give you the number to call to join. And as we prayed, I what I saw was a very simple image. Now, it, it's one of those weird ones where what I'm about to describe is something auditory. However, what I saw, all I saw was a picture. Or oh, should I say no, not a picture, it was an image because it was a moving picture. So it was like almost like a movie, but it was a silent movie. So basically, I didn't hear anything. I just saw. And what I saw was, a, I saw a lion with a massive mane, and it was roaring. It was roaring as we prayed. And I started to ask, okay, so what? But I didn't hear the, the roar. But I, I saw it during the whole action of, of, of the roaring. 
I said, okay, guys, I began to ask the Lord, what is this? I knew it was a prophetic image. I was very clear about that. Um, and as I did more study, now I thought that one of the things we would do today is not just talk about the prophetic word, but also then unpack it in teaching. But I think well, I, I told the, the, my, the backroom staff, as it were, the media team that, okay, guys, we'll postpone the teaching of it to another time. But the, the, the declaration part, well, I'll touch on that today. And that is this, that the lion of the tribe of Judah is about to roar again. Guys, if you want to do, if you want to do your own research, I started to pray about this. I began to to to, to read about it and 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 to study about that. What lions do, like look, the Lord does not associate Himself with too many animals in the Bible. They are very, very, very few and very specific. Why? Because He's not an animal, obviously. But then He's very comfortable to associate Himself with with things like a a, a lion or the eagle, which has a very prophetic uh, expression, or the lamb. You know, those, those are very, very key animals. And you can do your own study on that. Why would God associate himself? Why would the Lord associate himself with, with these things? But one of the things that I was made to understand that is about to happen, two, two things that are conjoined, is two sides of the same coin. And this is a, it's a call to the, to the church. It's, a, it's an encouragement, but also... You could call it a warning for the church, and that is this: anytime, because lions are very territorial, they're incredibly territorial, uh, above all other cats. Uh, you know, they're very, very territorial animals, and they they are the only cat, big cats, that live in community. They live as a community um, of they call them a pride, the pride of lions. The other cats are very independent; everybody just does their own thing. Anybody who has a, a domestic cat at home. You know what I'm talking about. Cats just kind of do their own thing. They they don't even give room to to. I've got one of my leaders has a has a cat at home, and she only the, the, the kitty cat only comes in when it's time to eat or when she wants to. I think it's a girl cat. Yeah, it, it is a lady cat. You know, and she comes in when she wants to get cuddled. She comes in when basically when it when it suits her. That's when she comes in. Cats are cats are not generally that that like homey. They they just do their own thing, but the lions are very peculiar. They're the only big cat that live in community and live together. They live together in, in big communities like that. And when a, when a lion, the lion, when the alpha male roars, is generally, number one, to sound an alarm to everything that is around, all the animals around it, to let them know that I'm still in charge. Basically, let them know this is still my territory. Don't come near my territory. But here's the interesting thing. The lion himself is not, he's not making that sound for himself. He's doing that sound so that nobody comes near. It, 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 it's pride. And that's the primary reason for that. But the other thing is this. When a lion senses that there is interference coming, then it gives another type of role. This time, it's no longer, I'm just letting you know this is my territory. This is now saying that you've crossed the line. I'm warning you. And church, we need to be, and I know this is going online. I know this is going for perpetuity. I, church, we need to be careful as a body of people. Um, offers are going to be made as time goes on in the, in the very near uh, weeks where how I want to be, be, be mindful how I say this. But when the world is going to link arms with the church and ask for, for more conjoined efforts, and I believe we must do conjoined efforts, we must, we must work together. We cannot be divisive in this season. We have to work together, but be careful what, what ground we give away. We must be careful what grounds we give away in this season. We must be very mindful about what type of, what, what kind of, uh, rock we, we remain on uh, as we give off we should not give off ground basically let's not give away ground let's not give away the, the ancient path the things that 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 make the core of what Christianity is about I believe like the song that we, we I learned when I was a little child you know Jesus is the answer for our world today and any
anything that comes to rob that uh, that rob us of that anything that asks us to lay that down anything that asks us to put that to one side this is not the time to compromise church it is never a good time to compromise of that nature but this is not the time to do it um, uh, 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 because we are we are pressured because we are trying to to make headway this is the time to hold the, the to hold our ground why the lion of the tribe of judah is not asleep our 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 chief in command he you know the one thing i learned about the lions uh is that the lion himself sometimes is not even around the lionesses are the ones that are usually with the cubs and they're the other ones kind of hanging about with the cubs and making sure that they're that and it seems like the lion is never around but the lion is always nearby always nearby and once in a while so there have been times when attacks have happened on the cubs and the lionesses and they're defending their pride and I, I watched a documentary of that where hyenas were attacking the cubs and and all those kind of things and all of a sudden the lion showed up and gave an almighty roar and the roar of the lion was enough to shake the hyenas and to and i believe that there are those who are hanging in the corners waiting for an opportunity to get an insight and an in, 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 inward uh, look into the church to take control from within. To take control from within. And the church needs to, be, needs to be wise, needs to be smart. We do need to work hand in hand with, with authorities. We need to work hand in hand with, with uh, govern, uh, the governance and, and leadership of the, of the country. But we must be mindful what we give away, what territory. And I'm not talking of uh, uh, geographical territory now. That's not uh, that's too menial to, to the Lord in this in this particular situation, because the line of the tribe of Judah is about to roar again. There will come a sound in this land that would be on. I mean, when the lion roars in the savannah, everybody hears it. All the animals hear it. They all they get it. There's nobody that can say that we didn't hear it. I, I've traveled to, to Kenya on a number of occasions. I went to South Africa as well. And where, where they have roaming, as it were, roaming lions within their, their uh, safari. And there's this enigmatic uh, environment that is created once you hear, oh, I think there's a lion over there. Or you suddenly hear the roar of a lion. Everything else stops. And, you know, for those who might think that that's a bit too serious, you can just think of Lion King. You know, when when uh, Mufasa, when he roars, I mean, the whole of the savannah, the whole of the jungle is like, whoa, 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 what happened? What happened? Who has annoyed that man? Uh, and so as a, as a word for us as the church, I think it's something that we need to definitely take to heart uh, because the church is about to be strategically positioned again. For, for a while now, the church has been kind of put sidelined. But we're coming back center circle, uh, and, and in that positioning, that is at that place that we need to be careful what kind of alliances we make. That's the first bit. Be careful what kind of alliances we make, and then be careful what kind of word. What what what? How do we how do we portray? What do we say? We must only speak what we hear the Father speak. We must only do not not necessarily what is politically correct, but what is. Uh, ethically morally and most importantly most importantly scripturally correct it doesn't have to be popular but it's okay not to be popular we, we, we've seen that with politics anyway you know not all the politicians are popular not all the policies are popular but not all the unpopular policies are bad some of the unpopular policies have actually been to the good of the nation maybe not so an individual or just a group of individuals so we just need to be i'm not a but I'm not into party politics in that way. I do participate in voting and things like that, but I'm careful to only speak what I hear my father speak. And so I just in, invite you to, to, to do that, whether it's just to believe and pray for the church, even in this season, by the grace of the living God. But we will do a, a deeper teaching on just understanding that because, because he is the lion of the tribe of Judah and we are his offspring, therefore, you know, in my language, they say a thing of that, that, um, uh, hearing, uh, how, do they, how do you, how do you translate that? I'm trying to, trying to make it that, that it, I don't, mm, okay, very simply, that, okay, there's an easy way to do it. 
simply this, that the, the child of a lion, a cub, yeah, it just, it sounds so like the in English. In your way, it sounds deep. It actually sounds like, wow, that was deep. But in English, it's like, you know, a cub grows up to look like a lion. Well, yeah, we know that. But in Yoruba, it sounds better. <laughs> it sounds better in Yoruba. It's basically saying that, that, that what, what you're going to grow up to be is as a result of what gave birth to you. You cannot grow beyond the, the DNA of that which gave birth to you. For you to do that, you would have to mutate. And to mutate, you have not become something else than what you really were. And so we, we, we look at who has gone ahead of us. We'll look at what has gone ahead of us to know how we are to be. So if being that he is the line of the tribe of Judah, we need to understand what that means for us. What is, what is our, response, our response to that? What are the things that we need to learn about that? So please join us starting from next week. And we'll be looking into, I don't know what we'll call it. We'll probably call it the Lion Series or the Roaring Series or whatever. Something series, but it'll be about two or three part series about how we, what we learn and what we bring out of that, what we can, what we can glean uh, from that. On the other hand, I want us to look at very short uh, understanding, something that is quite topical, especially in this season, especially in this season. I mean, if you look around you, especially when we started, right? When we started um, COVID-19, one of my uh, dear leaders, she, she's, she's on the, on the call at the moment, and um, you know, you guys can't see her, I can see her, so she, 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 might, she might be giving me eyes in a few seconds. But I remember we were having conversation, and they were telling us about you know this whole corona thing that was coming, and you know, and look, like a lot of people, and I, I still have a little bit of that reservation, which is fine because my, my original thing was it's not that deep, you know, it's. We're going to be okay. We're going to be fine. We just need to adhere to the guidelines, and we'll be fine. But deep inside of me, I was thinking, oh, I'm sure it'll blow over. You know, it'll blow over. Maybe a week, maybe two weeks tops. I, I never envisaged lockdown. God didn't talk to, talk to me about lockdown. He didn't show me lockdown. Didn't envisage that. But she was always very, no, guys, it's bigger than you think. This thing is deeper than we think. And, you know, one or two of us were like, okay, let's not sensationalize it. And she was saying, this, I'm not sensationalizing this thing. I'm telling you, this thing is deeper than we think. And look, the honest is, she was right. She was absolutely right. I mean, people have been locked in their homes for six weeks. They're individuals that have not seen light of day outside for over six weeks. I have never experienced a lockdown that, this is not the time to even be watching Netflix because there's nothing on TV that is more fictional, more fantastical than what we're experiencing in real life. If there was ever a time where real life outdone, I mean, just put a camera on your street and you can stream that. It is more exciting than what is going on on Netflix or Prime or whichever package you have. Sky, I don't care which package it is. You can have Disney plus, 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 Disney A plus. None of it compares to what is going on. I go, I walk out on the street to go and do my exercise. I'm going to the shop, and you see people queuing up. I mean, masks everywhere. You think, is the, am I in the middle of a movie? I don't get it. Is, some, is this a wind-up? What is going on? Reality has been, there's a question mark, a huge question mark on what is real. And the, the question that I want to ask us now is, what is is reality. I'm not, this is not a, oh, is Corona real or not? Is it a hoax? I, it, it, that's not my issue at all. I'm not, I'm not even going anywhere near there. It's very simple. What is reality? What do we, what do you term to be your reality? What is real? How do you determine what is real from what is fake? How do we determine from what is real to what is fantasy? How do we determine what is real to what is what is just uh, uh, what's the word that they use in, in medical when you were just um, imagination or or elus uh, what is it? Is it hallucination? Yeah, hallucination. What what is reality? See, the more I think about that, I, I am reminded um, of of how impactful 
Your reality is, whatever that is, your reality is so key. So you knowing what is real from what is fake, it, it could be the difference between life and death. It could be the difference between life and death. There are people who are having hallucinations and they hear voices. Now, please, I need you to hear me out because I know that this, this is a, it's an online broadcast going to so many different people in so many different parts of the world with so many different experiences. This is not a, a disparagement on any condition. This is a just, we just want to investigate this, this truth. What is reality? The man or the woman that says, I heard a voice that told me to jump out of the window. How do you know, how do I know they did not hear a voice? Even if we didn't hear the voice, we're sitting in the same room and we didn't, we didn't hear the voice, and they up and, and leave. So what was real? Is, is it that they didn't hear? Or, okay, yes, they did hear, but what they heard was not real. And how do you determine that? How do we say, how, how do we differentiate what is real and what is not. See, for a long time, this was not one of those things that, that bothered me. I, I just, you know, if I can feel it, if I can, you know, if I can experience it, well, then it's real. And touch it, if it's there, well, <laughs> it's got to be real then. You know, if you try to touch it and it's not there, well, then it's not real. You know, if you reach out and try to hold it and it's not there, well, then it can't be real. So, so is reality then just something you can touch? So, well, if, if you can smell it, well, then it's got to be real. So reality is just what you can smell. You know, if you can feel it, then it's got to be real. You know, because if you can't feel it and you're talking about, yeah, nah, it's not, it can't be real. So reality is only the things that we can feel. The things that basically we can sense with our, with our, with our physical senses. Is that what is real? A few, uh, year, is a, about a year and a half ago now, most of the people within the, the Florida River family would have, would have, uh, be, you were part of the journey. I, I had uh, an incident and medical emergency that happened to me and I was admitted into hospital and in my time in the hospital because it was very traumatic what I went through was was quite traumatic at home um taken in by ambulance um, and I I stayed they, they had to do uh what's the what's the mouth one so there's a colonoscopy that's the one that comes from the knee and then there's a Oh, somebody mouthed it for me because it's gone off the top of my head now. Endoscopy. Thank you very much. An endoscopy. An oral endoscopy. Basically, they're, they're putting a camera. They're sticking a wire. It's a thick wire. They stick it down your throat, and they're trying to get to your stomach. I mean, just using, if you try it with your finger, it's annoying. You gag. You want to throw up. You want to do all those kind of things. And they stick this camera, and they're moving it about, to, obviously, for your own good. They're trying to check all the, you know, make sure that there's nothing. Because I had a lot of bleeding that happened. And I, I bled out. I was I was vomiting blood. I was, you know, passing out blood from, from my back passage as well, all at the same time. So they were thinking, okay, guys, we need to figure out what is going on. So they were sticking all manner of stuff down my throat to figure all these things out. Unknown to me at the time was that whilst they were doing all of that, it was it was causing trauma for my throat. My, my throat wasn't enjoying any of that. So when everything was all said and done, I went home. I was home. All of a sudden, one of the nights, this is my third or fourth night sleeping, I, I woke up in the morning because I had a very, very uh, annoying lump in my throat. It was so, it was disconcerting. It woke me up from sleep. And for those who know me, I enjoy my sleep. I don't get much time to sleep. I don't sleep for long. But when I do sleep, I want to enjoy it. So if anything is disturbing my sleep, I have a, I have a word from God that I use as my, as my, uh, my valium, my, my sleeping tablet. The Bible says that he gives his own sweet sleep, his own righteous one, sweet sleep. That is my word. I said, well, Lord, you said you give your own sweet sleep. So uh, I'm going back to bed. I'm going to sleep and it's going to be sweet in the name of Jesus. And guys, for years. For years, this has never stopped working. It's more effective than all the sleeping pills that I've heard about because the moment I begin to stand on that word, confess that truth, it becomes my reality. And so I slept, and this thing woke me up again. I mean, how rude. This, this, this 
lump that was in my throat woke me up again. I was like, what is this thing? I began to scratch a little bit. It, was, it wasn't painful, but it was just annoying. It was just, it was just there. But because I could, I could feel it so, so tangibly in my throat, I thought, okay, you know what? In the morning, I'll get to the hospital. I'll go to the hospital. They'll do that search thing. Whatever it is, they'll get it out. You know, just take it out and let's stop, don't disturb me again. I went to the hospital, ladies and gentlemen, and they they looked and they did a camera search, didn't find anything. I'm like, what do you mean you didn't find anything? Are you trying to tell me I'm crazy? Because I'm telling you, this thing woke me up. How can you tell me it's not there? They said, no, there's nothing there, sir. I'm like, what? I can feel it. Now, if you don't trust anybody else, please, for now, at least just for the next couple of minutes, trust me. I ain't crazy. I know what I feel. I'm telling you, lady, there is something there. Your, your machine is broken. I didn't say that part, but I was thinking it. <laughs> your, it's your machine that is broken. I said, no, I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry, sir, but, you know. And then I had a, a, a chat with one of my uh one of the members of the ministry who's also a medical doctor and you know from a, coming from a faith perspective she was like okay you know Sam, from what you're describing you know, she, for those who know her she's very you know dr demi is very uh diplomatic she, she she's not a sensationalist she she she'll, what, she'll do whatever she can to keep you in god's peace as she delivers interesting news to you so she told me, she goes, maybe, you know, you know, it has been said that there are some people who have experienced a thing called, you know, globus, the globus sensation. And if I originally was called globus hysteria. And if you're looking at the image now uh, on your screen, the, the globus hysteria or globus sensation, as, as they call it now, <clears throat> is a feeling of having a lump in the throat. Listen to this. It's a feeling of having a lump in the throat. Global sensation is a persistent sensation of a lump in the throat. People report the lump as a non-painful but often annoying. Global sensation is often difficult to treat. Uh, it can last a very long time, not, my, not in my case in Jesus' name, and will likely reoccur in the future. But once again, that is not my reality in Jesus' name. You'll understand what I mean. So now that, that, now that I began to understand what they were alluding to, that for the first time I began to really question, so what then is real? Because what I was so sure about, I was so sure because I could feel this lump in my throat. They're telling me it's not there. So basically to them, that's not real. It's not, it's not true that there's a lump. So, so what is it? Am I, am I not feeling or am I thinking that I'm feeling something or is there actually that there is something there and they just can't find it? And I, I need that to sink in first because some of us, our whole idea of what is real, what we respond to is only based on how we feel. Your, 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 your thermometer only picks up and you only read and you only believe the things that you feel. And the moment somebody suggests anything other than what you feel, you, you throw the baby out of the pram. You get upset. You think, what are you trying to tell me? Are you trying to just disregard what I'm feeling? No, nobody's disregarding that. I had to accept that. Wait, hang on. Are you telling me that my mind is just telling me that this thing is? Even though it is not. There's nothing there, but my mind was telling me, my brain literally was telling me something is in there. There's something that we need to deal with. It began to get me to think a little bit deeper that that is reality, the very apparent feeling that I have, which clearly was impacting my life and my well-being, or is a reality, the measurable cold fact that nothing was in my throat. Was reality what my experience was telling me or was reality what the experts were telling me? Is reality what I was feeling or is reality what those who are objective, who are not moved by the, by, by the situation, what they can see, what they can observe, what they can bring out, what they can testify concerning? 
Too many of us are living based on experience in terms of what, what we are feeling. Too many of us are based on how we are feeling. We're making our decisions based on how we feel. The Bible says to guard your heart. Because your heart is where everything that pertains to life. In the book of Proverbs, the Bible tells us that. Proverbs chapter 4, verse number 23. It tells you to guard your heart. Because out of it proceeds the issues. It determines the course of your life. And you look in the NLT, the New Living Translation. It says it determines the course of your life. So whatever sips into your heart, whatever you allow, if you allow bitterness to sip into your heart, it will alter your reality. Has that ever happened to you? If you're being honest with yourself, you tell me the, the truth is, it's happened. Look, both positive and negative. Have you ever, you, 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 you're so upset with somebody and now that bitterness has sipped into your heart, when you see that individual, even the good they do, you read it as evil. So you will find something wrong with what it is that they have done. If they smile, they were smirking. Everybody else saw a smile, you saw a smirk. If they, if they dress nice, they're showing off. If they flick their hair, if they've got any, you know, then, you know, they, they just, they're overdoing it. What's, what's her business, though? Like, phew, calm down, man. You're not that hot. Everybody else is thinking that, oh, my God, oh, she looks nice. Oh, she's dressed well. And in the same way, in the same way, if you've ever been, you know, have you ever met people that just have a really stanky attitude? Like, just bad attitude. And it's, it's really, in my opinion, really bad. Really, really bad. When it's a, let, okay, let's say I'm, I'm a guy. If it's a female, really pretty woman, but with a stanky attitude. Over time, when you look at her, you just don't see the prettiness anymore. All that you see is this, this ephemeral thing that the attitude has allowed to be. So you don't, you, don't, you cannot appreciate. So the question is, what is the reality? Is she actually just, just as she is physically? Or is it this ephemeral veil of attitude that has not covered that? You get the same thing with guys. A guy, you, you know, there's some guys that they, they were, I mean, they are husband material until they open their mouth. When you look at them from afar, they are looking, mm, I want to take this one home to mama. My dad needs to meet this guy. And then he opens his mouth, and you see what comes out of his heart. And you're thinking, mm, 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 no, no, mm, 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 mm. It's like trying to kiss somebody, you know, that, that looks fine. And then you get close, and their breath is, so, I mean, their breath can clear the savannah. You remember Timon and Pumba? Their breath is like Pumba. Even Pumba will run away from that kind of a person. All of a sudden, something, something interjects and interrupts what you thought was real. Why am I talking about this? Because right now, a lot of people's reality has been questioned. A lot of people, their reality has been questioned. It's been redefined. Some people's reality has always been about where they can go. They can, you know, they can up and go to the pub. They can up and go to a friend's house. They can up and do this, up and go there. They are always escaping instead of dealing with the things that they have to deal with. Instead of going deeper into the into the the, the, the bedrock of truth in their hearts, they've always had an escape to run away to something else to try and feed that. They've always run to something else to try and feed that, but their reality has been challenged even now. I'm a, I'm a connoisseur of, of, of movies. I love to watch uh, movies. And the, the whole fight between what you feel and, and what is fact and, and what is real. I was watching Matrix not a, a, a while ago. And <clears throat> one of my favorite uh, scenes in the whole... In fact, this was the scene that, that, that made the movie. If this scene went south, the movie ended. Literally. As in, I'm not even trying to be bad. The movie would have just ended. If this, if this scene... Went south, movie will be over. And that's the scene where Morpheus is sitting across the table from Neo. Neo is just about to, he's about to embark on this journey. But Morpheus is like, okay, hold up. Let's, let's, let's do a deal. You either take the red pill or the blue pill. Anybody remember that? The red pill or the blue pill. If you take, I think the red pill, you go back to your normal life or something like that. The blue pill, 
then you carry on this this journey. If Neo had chosen the, the, the pill to go back to his own reality, that would have been the end of it. No more. <laughs> Game over. Movie done. But he took the pill that allowed them to go. And in, in, that, in that scene, Neo was questioning. So wait, all the things that I've been doing before, is that real? Was that my reality? Or is this new thing that you're bringing me into, is this my reality that I was not aware of before? Which one is the real me? Which one is the real you as you're listening? And Morpheus' answer, if you're watching it on the screen, he basically asked the question that I'm asking now. He says, what is real? He says, how do you define real? If you're talking about what you can feel, what you can smell, what you can taste, what you can see, then real is simply electrical signals interpreted by your brain. I mean, I mean, Deep that for a second. That if you if you base your reality simply on what you can feel, what you can taste, what you can smell, what you can see, if that's it, if that is the sum total of what you determine to be real, then reality to you is simply electrical signals that are being interpreted by your brain. So if I can interfere with your interpretation, not with the sensation. With the interpretation, the moment I can do that, I can alter your reality. I can change what you experience. I can change. No, I don't even have to change what you what you go through, but I can change how you experience what you go through. Have you ever seen two people that go through the same thing, but they come out very different? Some people go through adversity. Two people go through adversity. One comes out and blames the world. The other one comes out and they are resilient to a core. Their resilience cannot be broken, cannot be brought down. They are pushing forward, moving further, simply because they have, they have dug in deep the way that they have interpreted what they have experienced has altered their reality. Uh, in, a, in another uh, movie that I enjoy, Inception, I mean, that movie just kind of, it goes, it, it messes your mind up. Because it goes in, and just when you think you're in, it goes in, and then from there, it goes in, and every every level seems to enter a new level of complexity to the point where the, the, the characters don't even know if they are in their real reality or in their fake reality. And those of us who are watching it as well, even right at the end of the movie, I'm sure we can have discussions about this, we're still not sure. Uh, what, was he back in the real reality or is he in the fake? We, we, we don't know. But there was one thing that they always had. There's a thing that they had called the tell. The tell was a, a uh, piece of furniture or, or something that the individual held. So Leonardo DiCaprio's one was a, was a top spin. And basically, if he was in the real reality, the top spin would, would roll and then it would fall. If it was in a fake reality, it would just keep rolling. It will never stop. So that was the only thing he couldn't tell by what he touched because he, his, his sensations had been, his interpretation of sensation had been altered. He, his, his appreciation of reality had been altered. So he had to have the tell. So here is now my encouragement to you and I that we need a, we need a tell. We need something that is independent of me or you that tells me what is real. It has to be outside of me. Because if it's inside of me, then it, it can be corrupted. The moment it is subject to me, it is corrupted. It has to be something that is outside of me, something that is objective, that can, and something that knows me. Knows me and knows my destiny. You all know where I'm going with this. It's simply the word of God. The word of God knows you. God who created you, he knows you. So even when everything you are experiencing is telling you one thing, if God says something otherwise, then I choose to believe what God said. I dare to believe God. For you, I dare to believe God. I dare to believe God for your, for your relatives that, that, that may be sick. I dare to believe God for, for my, my sister. I've got one of my sisters whose mom 
uh, we, we we heard news that she was she was in a in a really bad state in the in the hospital. I'm tr I dare to believe God that she'll come home. I dare we dared as a family to believe God for our sister's brother. And today we hear that that which was unlikely, that which was uh, unseemly at the time, God turned it around. And what we what we held on to as truth altered the reality. Too many people are living from the position of their feelings. Can I encourage you to stop? Because your feelings are not your leaders. They are but the they are but sensations that you are receiving and you are responding. Can we start living rather than just responding? One of the things I did during the whole Globus uh, sensation issue was I, I started to sleep with a cup of water beside me. And I, I told myself, this was my tell. Every time I started feeling that, my throat will feel like it's, it's choking up. I feel like I can't really breathe. I'll just take the cup of water and I'll drink it. If the water goes, because you can feel cold water go down your throat and go all the way into your, your midriff. And if I can feel it go all the way down my midriff, then I tell myself, I said, well, then there's, there's nothing there. Nothing is in the way. Because if there was something in the way, it will, it will, get, it will be clogged up. I'll, I'll get a backup or something like that. And that became something that I was holding on to. The Bible says, whose report will you believe? It says, we shall believe the report of the Lord. The Bible continues to encourage us. He said, who is it that has spoken if the Lord himself has not spoken? The one that they, there's a they that declared him dead called Lazarus. When he showed up, he said, no, he's not dead, he's sleeping. There was a young girl, Jairus' daughter, that they had said had died. When he showed up, he said, no, that's your reality. Let me show you the, the, the real reality. Are you living substandard to what God has called you to live? Are you living on, uh, on somebody else's reality? Are you living based on somebody else's interpretation of what your life should be? What your life should look like? What your marriage should look like. What your career should look like. What your business should look like. Are you, are you living based on all those things? Or are you? is it what they've said on the news that has not become your reality? So you're feeling something. No, I'm not suggesting that you ignore it. No, what I'm telling you is that you, 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 you overcome it. You overcome it by the truth of the word of God. The Bible says that you will know the truth. We, we dealt with this in overflow recently for those who are part of the Florida Rivers family. It says, and you will know the truth. To know this genosco, which is to know by experience. I'll never get tired of reiterating this because if we get this, it changes your Christian life. It changes your Christian experience. It moves you into a new realm of reality when, when you speak, you will be like fantasy to other people. You'll be saying things and people will be wondering, what? This, no, things like that don't happen. Things like that don't happen. Says who? Get into the word of God. Get a hold of the, of the word of God and make that your reality. Like I had to do that with, with the word of the doctors and the nurses. I said, okay, you know what? Since you tell me that there's nothing there, no problem. No problem. I believe that there's nothing there. I'll use this cup of water just to remind me of what the experts had said in this situation. Now, the doctors and the nurses, are, they're not God, so they're not always right. We know that. We thank God for the work that they do, and they do a great job. Praise God for them. In fact, if there was ever, ever a time that we should rejoice in the, in the medical uh, profession around us, this is one of those days. This is one of those times where they have gone above and beyond the call of duty, and they continue to do so. So we rejoice. We, we celebrate you. We pray for you in the name of Jesus. But the reality is that you are not God. And I know you know that. You're not God. So therefore, if I could do that for doctors, because of the testimony of doctors, because of their expertise, how much more? How much more would I dig in? How much more should you dig in to what the expert of all experts, the, the sovereign, the creator God, Elohim himself, what he says about you, regardless of how you feel, just like what the doctors told me, regardless of how I felt, could not change their word, could not change the fact 
But God doesn't deal in fact, he deals in truth. So my experience and your experience cannot change God's truth. If only I submit myself to God's truth, then his truth will change my experience eventually. I'm a living testimony of that that happened in the physical. That's exactly what happened for me. The more I, the, the sensation will come and it will, it will squeeze my throat and I'll feel there's a lump, but I remember what they told me. Ain't nothing there. So in a, no matter how much I felt it, I reminded myself, I know you can feel it, Sammy, but you know there's nothing there. There's nothing there. And there are times when it seems like death is, 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 is camping around your bed and you're telling yourself, no, I, I know, I know what I'm feeling. I know, I'm not, I'm not denying my feelings, but I know the truth. Because the expert, the Lord Almighty told me, I will not die, but I will live to declare the glory of the living God. I know what he told me. He told me that by his strife, I was healed. It was a, it's a past. And you hold on to that. Listen, I would have spent loads of sleepless nights if I choose to disbelieve what they told me and I'm there panicking, but I can feel it. Oh, but I can feel it. You know, it, it, it's a very horrible thing when, when, when you're the one then just waking people up all the time. Yeah, but I can feel yeah, but there's nothing there. Yeah, but I can feel it. But I can feel it now. I can feel it. And you are dealing with that. What we need to do is press beyond the feeling. Press beyond the feeling. Get beyond that. Nobody said deny it. No, it is there. I feel it, but I'm pressing beyond it because I know. You see, you don't just make that declaration based on an imagination. You don't just imagine yourself whole. You don't just imagine yourself free. No, what did God say concerning it? Because whatever the Lord has said concerning your future, the, what you might be experiencing it is an economic downturn. You've lost your job. They put you on this. They've done this to you. They've done that to you. And you're experiencing the hardship that comes with all of those kind of things. But the Lord still tells you that you are the head and you're not the tail. And you're thinking, yeah, but you don't understand. If you know what I'm going through, I'm not, I'm not denying what you're going through. But I'm telling you, let's hold on to that word because that word won't shift. Heaven and earth will pass away. But the word of the Lord, that does not shift. So if I hold on to the one that does not shift, guess what's going to happen? When everything else has passed away, including the doubters, and they've gone, I'm still there with the word. Because that word will work. He will watch over his word. To ensure that it comes to pass. I'm standing in the I'm standing with all those who are who have been laid off from work, all those who are looking to, to, to launch their businesses in this time. Please tune in next week because we are, we are coming for you. We are coming for you. Right now, we are speaking the word that concerning you, it will be well. Concerning you, there will be a lift. Concerning you, there will be a raise. Concerning you, there will be help that will be sent to you out of nowhere. From uncommon places, help will locate you in the mighty name of Jesus. Your reality. What is your reality? Are you judging your reality based on how you feel? Or are you judging your reality based on what? Well, praise God. I think we had a, a minor technical uh, issue there. But, you know, so we're talking about how many people are living based on what God has said and not based on, on what, uh, how, how things are around you or what you are experiencing at the moment. You know, the majority of the time, we don't see things as they truly are. We only see them as we say they are. Those, those uh, in Numbers chapter, chapter 13, they went to go and spy out the land. And they came back and they gave a negative report. And that report that they gave, they said. What they said was, we were like grasshoppers in our own sight. They said, we were like grasshoppers in our own sight. That became their reality. Were those people tall? Yes, they were tall. Were they big? Yes, they were big. 
But that was just a fact until they received it and they said it to themselves that so it is in our own experience. Now they experience themselves as grasshoppers. But the two that refused to see themselves as grasshoppers, they powered through onto the promise. I see you powering through to your promise in the name of Jesus. I see you plowing through all the negativity that is around at the moment. I'm piercing through all of that to enter into your promised land according to the will of God. Thoughts are the language of the brain. Feelings and sensations are the language of the body. But truth is the language of the spirit. Truth is the language of the spirit. You need to learn to speak from the from the from the base of your spirit from the from the from the from the uh, from the foundation of your life which is your spirit how you uh, a man by the name of joe dispenser said how you think and feel creates creates your state of being how you think and feel how you think and feel it creates so it not just um responds to but if you continue to live like that it now begins to create your reality so the question is the one that you created is that your real reality or is it something that has just been something that you have just brought on I'm going to be rounding up now the bible says in the book of proverbs chapter 23 verse number seven says for as he talking of the man as he thinks in his heart, says, so is he. Eat, drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. Says, as you think, <clears throat> as he thinks in his heart, so is he. I want to encourage you to live beyond your feeling. I mean, it's such a simple word, a simple encouragement but the reality of it the reality of it see when when the people like the sas and all those people you know people that are being trained to to do the extraordinary things have you noticed it's all those people that have been trained to do the extraordinary things they always train them to live beyond their feelings anybody that's going to do anything extraordinary in life they are trained to live to live beyond their feelings Marathon runners, world, all the world record holders, they feel what you feel. There's a thing called the wall. I did, I did triple, no, no I, I did triple jump, but I did, uh, what's that one? Steeple chase. I did a steeple chase in school. I, it was not one of my fortes. I just did it because it was an opportunity to get out of school, you know, and go, go on one of those uh, athletics, you know, those athletic school trips. And they don't, they don't, have, they're, not, they're not doing triple jump. So I was like, what? What am I going to do? And there were other guys that were faster than me. I was fast, but I was not the fastest. There were other guys that were faster than me. So I'm like, look, I was like, coach, what don't you have anything for? Uh, uh, there's no idiot that would do the skip chase. I said, I'll be the idiot. Thank you very much. I'll go. <laughs> Here I am. Send me. Send me. You know. And I, I went on the steeple chase. And in the steeple chase, I mean, I came second to last, but at, at least I was out there. <laughs> and there were moments where I, I was sure I was going to die. I mean, it was I was convinced. My whole body was shaking. Everything about me was like, nah, we can't do this. We can't do this. And then I spoke to the coach about it. And then he told me this. He said, do you know what? Yeah, that's a natural reaction. It's called the wall. And all of us have different uh, distances where we hit the wall. Go one of my leaders again. She is a she's a machine when it comes to running. As she just runs. I, I keep telling her, maybe we need to change her name to Forrest Gump because she just runs. She runs and runs and runs. Like, don't you get tired? She even challenged me. I'm, I'm about six three tall. She's probably about five three tall. You know, and she challenged me, telling me, oh, I'll have the first person if we sprint. If we sprint, you might beat me. But if we go on a long distance run, uh, you know what? I think I'll beat you. I'm sure I'll be. She, she's actually on the screen right now. She's pointing at me going, yeah, I'll beat you. I'll beat you. Look, we will do it for charity. We will do that race. We will race for charity. 10K. That's 10K distance, not 10K pounds. Although 
Uh, sorry, 10k pounds, not 10k distance. If you guys can raise 10k, I'll run 10k. If you raise 10k, I will run 10k against her. Who does she think she is? Now that, look, I've understood my reality. My reality is not what, because I hit the wall. The wall is when your body begins to tell you that you cannot do this anymore. You begin to experience you are, you are gasping. You are thinking you're about to faint. It's about to go down. But there is a truth that we know via science now. That when the body is saying that, you have reserved air. You have reserved uh, uh, chambers that still have air within. You don't feel it, but it is there. You don't, you don't, it, 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 there's no sensation, but there is a reality that it is there. And if you can push through the wall, if you just push through that moment, suddenly your heart, your, your, your lungs kick into that. And all of a sudden, you get this new surge of energy. And you're wondering, where was it? I was about to faint just five minutes ago. But now I can go for another 2K. Literally, I can go for another 2K. But most people, 99% of people will probably have stopped at the wall. They will stop when it is difficult. They'll stop when it is tough. They'll stop when it, when it feels too painful. They'll stop at that point. I started taking up running again uh, as I'm building up my, my fitness. And I'm still waiting to, to overcome the wall at this stage. <laughs> I recognize it. I recognize the wall when it happens. It's just that now I respect the wall a bit more than I used to. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's chasing me. Nobody's chasing me. <laughs> I don't get a medal for this. <laughs> but if I'm if I'm if I'm running against GB, I'm sorry. Wall, if I if I see if the wall attempts to come near me, I will show that wall. It will, I will just shout hallelujah. The wall is coming down. Hey man. But that's the reality. That is the reality. The reality for that runner is this, even though you feel like you can't take any more, guess what? You have reserve energy. Some of you that think you can't handle this anymore, you can't, I can't handle that anymore, I can't take that relationship anymore, I can't take this, I can't take that, I can't do this, I can't do that. Find out what the truth is first. Because here's, the, here, here's where the wall comes into an issue. If, if somebody has an underlining heart condition, underlining lung condition, when you hit the wall, you better stop. You better stop. Why? Your truth is different from somebody else's truth. That's why knowing the truth is key. Once you can find out the truth, which is, it's an independent, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's an independent evaluation of your situation. It has to be an independent evaluation of your situation because if it's based on you, you are biased. So you need someone who is removed looking at it to say, okay, based on what I can see, this is it. In the natural, we have doctors. We have physios that can do that. But you are not just natural. You are supernatural. So we need he who can see all things to evaluate my situation. And tell me, press on, Sammy. It's okay. Keep going. I know you feel like stopping right now, but keep going. Or sometimes, stop. I know you feel like carrying on, but I'm telling you, stop. I invite you to grow. I invite you to press on forward. I invite you to reevaluate what your reality is but you cannot reevaluate your reality until you press into your truth. You've got to find out what God has to say about your situation. You've got to find out what God has to say about your condition. You've got to find out what God has to say about that, 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 that climate, about that man, about that woman, about that marriage, about that job, about that career, about that business. You've got to find out what God has to say about that sickness. You don't, don't, don't start claiming sicknesses. Don't start, don't start signing for, for, for the, for packages that you did not order for. I, I, I don't say, you know, you know, oh, I'm just taking this for my headache. When did it become mine? 
It is a headache, yes. It doesn't have to be mine. Doesn't have to be mine. Oh, my this. You know, you know my condition. You know my no 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 the condition, please. It is the condition, but I'm dealing with the condition. This is for that condition. And I'm I'm taking it for the condition. Um, somebody might say, Oh, that's just um you know, it's semantics. Keep keep using the wrong language and see how it re it reprograms your mind. And keep using the right language, and once again, see how it reprograms your mind. It will reorientate you. And then the rest of your body will begin to recognize that we're hang on. We've changed ownership. We are thinking right, therefore, we have to act right. Lastly, faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. Faith and fear both come by hearing. So start speaking and listening to the right things. They will build you up and they will give you an inheritance among those who are sanctified. It's been an honor to be able to share with you. It's been a privilege to, to be welcomed into your home, but more importantly, into your hearts. And we just invite you to continue to, to join with us. We'll pray in a minute. If you've not had the opportunity, if this is your first time uh, worshiping with us online, and, and you just happen to stumble upon it or somebody has invited you, can I encourage you to subscribe um, so that different things that we'll be doing, you will be notified of that. I, I don't know where the subscribe button is, but it's somewhere there. I'm sure you can find it. You know, Just, just press on that. And, and if you can turn on notifications, it'll help as well. So that when we're having other services, you'll be able to join us. We, 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 we jealously guard the, 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 the privilege that, that we have to be able to communicate with you, even in this manner. And we thank you. We'll keep doing what we can to the best of our ability and by the grace that is supplied by the Holy Spirit to be able to do things even to a greater standard of excellence. As you can see, the team around me, have they, they, they just keep upgrading things all the time for us to keep on growing in, in this. Um, they, they've given me a toy to, to, to play with now. Uh, we started the service like that, so I think I'm going to end the service like that. Um, and I don't know who I want to call on, but guys, oh, 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 oh. the Lord oh. is God. Y'all can tell. All things continue to work out for our good um, at all times, at all times. I love you, um, and I trust God. Oh, okay. Hold on. We have a question. I've got... Um, that's a very good question. I, I, I suspect the question here is, what does, what does that look like practically not giving up ground? And I suspect that about the, um, if, if you do not mind the, for the questionnaire, I'll give you a short answer now. But since we're starting that series next week, please tune in next week for a, for a, a more elaborate answer. But it's simply not compromising, not compromising our stance. So, for example, this is just a random example. This is not, the Lord did not tell me this one uh, for, based on that. But it's something that the Lord has been teaching me about from years before, um, if there is a, if there's a, 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 if there is a move to bring all faiths together to meet around the round table and for that to occur, now I have no problem with that. Everybody coming around the round table, praise God. If we're going to be talking about peace and we're going to be talking about moving forward, praise God for that. But if to facilitate that, there is now a call to say that, um, well, we don't want to offend anybody. Therefore, those of you who are Christian, we, we accept the fact that, you know, you, you believe in a God. Great. Praise. No, no problem. No problem with that. We'll, we'll just, shall we just agree on the things that we all agree on? That there is a God, uh, a supernatural being, 
but the the issue which is the the defining or the differentiating issue that like all this Jesus business that you guys are talking about that that excludes other religions it it, it makes it too exclusive you know uh, there are other religions that 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 they don't mind joining you on this God trip, but the Jesus trip is like it's too much. You're too you become too exclusive. At that point, the Christian has to say, "Well, without Christ, there is no Christianity." Even etymology, it, etymologically, without Christ, Christianity doesn't exist. All you have is anity, which is close to insanity. So it, it's those kind of things. And the example that I've just given might seem far-fetched, but guys, it's not far at all. It's not far at all. I know this is going online. Um, so it, we can reference it later on. There will be an invitation to, 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 to subdue, to, to, to play down the, the, the place of Jesus Christ just so as to forge a, uh, to, to be able to welcome in a bigger group of people to feel comfortable. It's okay to stick with Christ. It's okay to stick with Christ. God is returning the voice of the church. My father is returning the voice of the church. And, you know, nobody has to agree. In the, the, the jungle, you don't have to agree with the lion. But when he roars, you will bow. You will bow. It is well. We might do a quiz uh, next week as well. But, all is well. It is well. I just want to just stretch my hands and just pray for you right now that, Lord, every single one who is dealing, Father Lord, with, with situations and issues in their life right now, I pray for them. I pray for those whose reality, Father Lord, has been shaken up, those whose experiences, Father, have been defining their, 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 their health, their experiences have been defining their, their wealth. It's been defining everything about them. I'm asking, oh God, that today there'll be an invasion of your truth into their heart. There'll be an invasion of your truth. Father Lord, into their, into their experience, that it will, it will remodel their experiences in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for those who are sick. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, because by your stripes we were healed. The Bible says, oh God, that it is in you that we live, in you we move, in you we have our being. Whomsoever you, O oh God, set free, son of God, that person is free indeed. And so we just welcome you, Lord, into those situations. The, 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 the centurion said, speak only the word, and my servant will be made whole. And so we speak the word today. Bible says, wherever the word of the king is, it says there is power. King Jesus. You have placed your word upon our lips. Therefore, we speak healing over everyone who is sick. Anyone who is symptomatic, we declare your healing in Jesus' name. Be made whole. For all things have worked together and are working together for our good. To those who love God. To those who are the call according to your purpose, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. And amen. And amen. And amen. Well, God bless you. I rejoice with you uh, this week as it starts uh, all over again. This is going to be an incredible week. By the grace of God, you're going to experience God's goodness. You're going to experience God's grace. We are waiting on our prime minister as they, they give us the, the, the what, what, what time is the, is the broadcast? Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. So please tune in seven o'clock for those who want to you know, follow through with that. If you miss it, I'm sure within well, within the Florence Rivers family, we'll find ways to to ensure that we update you on what is necessary um, in those in those places. So God bless. You. Make sure you tune in tomorrow for Everyday Good News uh, with myself, uh, Everyday Good News with P. Sam, uh, Samson the Baptist on Instagram. We've got guests coming from all over the world now, and we keep, we keep on growing that. And uh, keep your eyes peeled for more exciting news of things that will be happening. We love you. And until we meet again, we'll continue to remain flowing rivers. We're birthed in life wherever we flow. Amen. Take care now. Thanks for tuning in to this channel. I hope that this message has made an impact in your life. Now, don't forget, like, share, subscribe, and turn on notifications so that you can keep up with the things that God is doing through and in us. Okay, till next time, we remain flowing rivers. We're burst in life wherever we flow.
birth in life wherever we flow.